Okay, uh, welcome everybody to our special meeting of council um, to discuss the McLean Mill. Uh, our first order of business is to uh, recognize the territories of the Sashot and Hoopachesset First Nations. Would somebody like to move approval of our agenda? So, all in favor? Carried. Okay. And just to let everybody know the structure of tonight's meeting, um, we have had a committee of the whole meeting on this topic. So our last meeting, we welcomed the public up to give um, feedback, and we were very thankful to have as many people engage in that meeting as we had. Tonight's meeting is more about council asking clarifying questions um, and starting to make some decisions around this topic. So tonight's meeting, we don't have a formal spot on our agenda for public input because we've taken that input at this point already. Um, but we want to thank everyone for coming and, and still being a part of, of the process. And with that, we will move on to item B, which is um, the first item is the summary of the city's expenses for 2014 to 2018. CAO. Madam Mayor, I'm just going to bring that up. Madam Mayor, the uh, Director of Finance, Kathy Rothwell, is in the room, I believe. Nope, oh, she's not in the room. <laughs> Let me walk you through that. So, Madam Mayor, Council, um, Council had asked that the, at a previous meeting to um, be informed on, on expenditures at McLean Mill um, from previous years. So what we were able to pull together was um, a record of expenditures by the city in the five years previous. And you can see there that there are, um, those are broken into operations and capital and then um, some special or emergency expenditures listed in some of the years. Um, we've done, uh, our finance department has done um, uh, as best as they could with the time given to ferret out these costs. Um, I'm not saying there aren't other costs that we didn't find as well. Um, there's also um, considerable staff time in those years, but not, um, not staff time that's been uh, directly budgeted for. So it's um, staff time in other operational um, areas. Okay. Thank you. Councillors, are there any questions? Okay, seeing none, we'll move on to the next item, which is the 2019 Operational Options and Draft Budget for the Alberni Pacific Railway and National and McLean Mill National Historic Site. Um, and I'll call up Dr. Jamie Morton um, to kind of walk us through these documents because there are three different budgets um, for with each with two different options. Yes, there are. Thank you, Madam Mayor and Councillors. Uh, yeah, the... the um, little piece that you've got up on screen now is sort of the rationale or background context for what I was trying to do with that. There were some givens. I was told that the events that were planned already and that were booked and so forth were kind of sacrosanct. Those had to stay on the, on the books. That had to be figured in regardless. Um, the direction was to look at separating out the APR and the McLean Mill uh, site operational budgets as separates and the suggestion was to come up with a minimal you know what would it, it take to just keep it ticking over as opposed to what would it take to have a fuller operation something uh, more analogous to what has been going on in the past but breaking it down a bit more to to figure out what different cost centers are costing and potentially what the revenue could uh, could be I've got to say the revenue is fairly conservative on all these. I think with most of these we could expect uh, higher income levels than what are suggested here. But, you know, again, it's, it's to try and give a, a baseline, try and, and break some of it down a bit. I am not sure. Um, I, I could walk you through some more of this a little bit, or if you have had a chance to look at the budgets and if you have questions, that perhaps would be the best way to to deal with this. Council, are there questions? To get started? You know, it might be beneficial um, to go through each of them um, and just kind of compare the options or at least give a breakdown of, of sure. what the different routes are. Yeah, I can Thank do you. that, absolutely. Thank you. So again, what I tried to do with this was to put the minimal and moderate operations side by side so it could be more or less a direct comparison. And again, some of the things the events, there are 13 confirmed weddings for the year. There are other potential venue bookings. And again, that might be a conservative number in terms of what the revenue generated is. 
uh, fundraising, um, donation sponsorships. Obviously, if there's more going on, it's easier to get capital, to get people to donate to projects and things um, than if it's, it's more or less static. The minimal operations one for McLean Mill is basically looking at it as a static city park in essence. Um, it still fulfills the mandate of preserving and presenting. So the work that's done on the assets, on the historic assets of the site would still need to be done. And again, I, because I had the direction that the events and weddings and so forth were, um, were something that needed to proceed, they are figured into that. With both these options, I cut back the food sales to being events only. Part of the rationale for that is that the restaurant was a fairly major cost center in terms of employment, in terms of revenue maybe not quite matching what the cost of it was. So looking more at just when there is an event going on, when something is happening, having food services associated with that in both cases. Uh, in most of the other things, uh, again, rough estimates, the gift shop sales have been about, I believe it was twelve or $14,000 this year. I'm estimating a double mm -hmm. gift shop revenue uh, if there is fuller operation, if there is more going on on the site. Um, campsite rentals, they have been fairly minimal this year in terms of revenue. I've just projected from that. Most of the numbers I've used here are based on the 2017-28 numbers that are available. Now, I hadn't seen the final December reconciliation uh, when I was preparing these, so some of the numbers would have changed a little bit based on that. <clears throat> the, again, minimal operations, static, uh, and, and that means passive interpretation. <clears throat> Excuse me. Of course, my voice would go now. The um, open public access to the site, no admission fee, uh, signage enhanced, and p perhaps uh, electronic interpretation, things like smartphone um, transmissions that could be picked up by people, things that would let people go through the site, understand what the site's about, without somebody actually managing them, handling them through the site. Uh, again, the the costs, the, um, the estimated expenses are predicated mostly on having the events run there and a basic staff, you, you still do need some kind of staff, I was suggesting a part-time manager, somebody in the office probably on a, a, a more continuous basis. I didn't do org charts or anything as part of this, this was just a very, very rough exercise. The, there are going to be some requirements for contemporary facilities, uh, maintenance and repair, if they are being used as venues for events, that's part of that. Insurance, slightly higher if it is a more operational site. Um, and accounting and legal, the numbers are a bit lower than what they have been in the past. I don't know if that's realistic or not. That perhaps is a number that should be going up a little bit um, based on what I've seen now. The interpretation piece, again, that, that's one of the largest single differences in expenses. If you go to the bottom of, of that, uh, that table, the, the, the signage and publications piece would, would be required regardless of whichever option is done. That's something that's been on the books for years since before the McLean Mill Society took it over. The idea that there does need to be some sort of passive interpretation for visitors to the site. Uh, some of the capacity was eliminated when the former visitor center was turned into a, um, a venue for events. Uh, so some of that capacity was lost. That does need to be re recovered somehow uh, to interpret the site more effectively. The main focus on the moderate operations is having demonstrations. And with that, I'm envisioning having uh, interpreters, these, these could be costumed interpreters, seasonal interpreters, people hired under grants primarily. Uh, I would also like to, or, or think it's possible that the sawmill could be made operational again for demonstrations, perhaps on a, a lower level than it was in the past. The steam logging, the historic logging exhibit is very popular. The guys are very interested in continuing with that. It's relatively inexpensive to run. 
So if that could be incorporated somehow. And again, the blacksmith, other facilities, trucks from the IHC going out there for demonstration, display, all this would be possible for not a whole lot of money. The uh, part that I found interesting, and honestly, I didn't put the fix in on this, but when I did the total expenses versus, uh, versus total revenue, projected revenue for these two models, the input from the city of Port Alberni wasn't that all different. The main difference being that this is looking at uh, an $8 adult admission to the site um, when it is being interpreted in the moderate model. And that revenue, you know, again, even allowing for, for uh, children and family groups and so forth that are generating less uh, total revenue, it still gives, gives a chunk of cash coming in. It also means that if you're looking at personal services interpretation, you're eligible for the revenues from government programs <coughs> that permit you to hire people. It, it makes the site more active overall. And I, I believe, you know, I, I was only projecting, I think, 8,000 visitors a year, which is a very conservative figure again. But it, it, it actually breaks down so that it doesn't cost a lot more to have a, a more active site than to have a totally passive site. Questions now? Are there questions on the first portion here, McLean Mill? Councillor Poon? I, I don't know if, I, maybe I'm forgetting a few things, but 8,000 people, how many people do we see now? Uh, about 9,000. But Th that's as part of the train. And remember, this is separated out, so it's assuming not making the assumption that they're all traveling on the train getting out there. And of those 9,000 that we currently see, how many of them are actually paying to, for admission? Uh, not that many. They, the, they are paying for the train, and theoretically the, some of the revenue from that should be going to the historic site operation. Because the two things were always kind of inextricably mixed before, uh, sometimes it's a bit hard to, to uh, pull those apart, deconstruct right. that. Thank uh, you. There, there have been a lot of people, there, there haven't been particularly good, um, it isn't really good documentation for the last couple of years as to how many walk-ins there are or how many rubber tire visitors there are. And I'm, I'm basically projecting a, a larger chunk of that, hoping for a larger chunk of that. With this model, um, 8,000 people, um, are you envisioning only charging when there are demonstrations going on, or would we be charging all year round? I, I see it as a seasonal operation for that, principally. I think it would it would probably revert to the passive model more in the off season, uh, potentially with special events and things, things like the the Christmas events and Halloween events, seasonal events like that, can be major major revenue mm -hmm. generators. I know the um, Burnaby Village, for example, uh, does most of their revenue at Christmas and Halloween, and that's not uncommon for a lot of the historic sites. So, ramping it up for things like that, basically. For sure. Okay, thank you. Councillor Paulson? Um, <coughs> this is probably a moot question, but um, in descriptors, you have uh, minimal operation and moderate operation. How would you describe the 2018 version? Um, would, it be, would it fall in this moderate operations, or would it be over and above this moderate operation? No, no, it would be less than the moderate operations because the sawmill wasn't running. Right. Um, the, because of the the uh, shaker event and things like that, a lot of the interpretation was shut down for a month or a month and a half, essentially, in the high season. Um, so it wasn't really focused to that level. It was kind of halfway between the minimal and moderate. Again, with an emphasis on the, the train as much as anything, um, there were 55, give or take, um, runs out to the mill. Uh, and again, because the two things were linked together more closely, it, it's hard to pick it apart totally. But I, I would say it was halfway between the minimal and moderate in terms of what was actually delivered on site. And uh, one of those are very secretive Toyota run, I think. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. Councillor Haggard. 
Thank you. I'm not sure if this is the appropriate time to ask this question, but um, your events coordinator has just left, so how will that Im be impacting your special events revenues? It Do you have any plans for that? Them. Apparently she, uh, and this is, this is what um, I, I have seen in the correspondence in the past week or so, uh, she's interested in remaining involved by remote control, uh, telecommuting, uh, so the, the events that are already set up, there would have to be somebody on the ground, obviously, to handle the, the, uh, the events as they were happening. But uh, it's probably worth trying to maintain some continuity that way. So it, I don't have a good answer for it. It obviously would impact it. Councillor Washington. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, Dr. Moore, I'm just, I'm not seeing anything under your revenue for the five acre shaker, is that, do uh, you? That's based on 2017, 2018 figures. Okay, so it's not, you, you get nothing for it? There was in kind, is what I understand, okay. um, but I haven't seen that quantified. I'm, I'm sure there are numbers available, I just haven't seen them, I haven't been privy to that. Thank you, Council, any other questions before we? Move on to the train budget, Councillor Poon. Um, was there any revenue uh, coming in from uh, filming or things like that? Yeah, it, now again, it's hard to break that down because there's a lot of players. That was done by the Industrial Heritage Society stroke APR. So that wasn't revenue that accrued to the McLean Mill operation. That was revenue that accrued to the Industrial Heritage Society. It was them that set up the arrangement with the Toyota people and ran the trains. And, and, and there are other equivalent things to that. The Santa run is another case. So when we get to the APR budgets, I haven't figured the revenue or ridership from the Santa runs in there because that's strictly an IHS APR um, event <coughs> rather than something that figures into the larger operation. Just out of curiosity, how do we set which are city events and which are IHS events? Is it just the history of what has? It largely is. It's been fairly informal, and that would be something that would be good to start to, to um, define a little okay. more closely. Uh, hopefully, whatever agreements are finalized between the IHS and the city will define that more. I, I hope you're in agreement with that, Jacob. <laughs> um, Thank you very much. Any other questions, Council? Councillor Corbiel? No. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, moving on to the train, railway. Both. Both the Both. train and the railway. <laughs> so, what I've done here, and I, again, remember part of the, the challenge is to figure out some way to make these work as separate entities but still make it not really scary to you guys in terms of what it costs. Um, so it again offers a minimal and a moderate operations option. Um, we'll start with the revenue piece. That's predicated on, on what has um, been generated in the past with existing runs over the last couple of years. So for the Santa run, you, you probably all mostly know it just runs on the flats. It doesn't go up the hill to the mill and everything. So it's, it's a, a shorter run. It's uh, not as dramatic maybe in terms of scenery. You don't have the mill at the end of it, but people enjoy it. Now, what I'm suggesting with that is a relatively um, minimal program. So it, it's something that would be happening on weekends uh, maybe for long weekend special events and things, so 60 runs only being looked at. Assuming 80 passengers per run, so not figuring full occupancy, that would be using the small uh, number 11 X uh, Mac Blow switching engine, uh, which is in functional operating condition right now, has just been safety checked in December of 2018. Uh, ideally, it can, it can take three cars, it can take five cars on the level. Um, so it would just depend on how ticket sales looked in that. I'm assuming a fairly low net revenue from that. You can see it's just a $10 fare, which is basically a throwaway for most people. 
Uh, so when people were visiting down at Harbor Key or in Port Alberni, they could jump on that, have a little short run back and forth, see the train yards, see the old mills, see the waterfront. Um, it wouldn't be the full experience, but I think it would still be marketable at that level. That, um, that would be the, the cheapest, cheapest option to keep things going. Now, again, the fundraising donation sponsorships would obviously be lower in that case because it's just not as dramatic. It's not focused on the steam engine or the larger uh, diesel electric going out to the mill. The, um, the total revenues are quite low overall. The, uh, actually, I'll cut over to the moderate operations one. So that's more analogous to what has been going on in 27 or 2018. It's focusing on the Alco 8427 as the primary mover. That's the larger diesel electric locomotive. It does require a chunk of work right now, and that needs to be done before it can be approved for operation, uh, work on the, on the um, wheel set in particular. It would also be nice to do some cosmetics on it, just to have it looking a bit more presentable if it does become the primary mover. The, um, Estimate there is down a little bit from what was run this year. This year it was about 55 runs. As I say, the occupancy level was about 40% or so uh, overall. The $25 per passenger average net revenue is predicated on that adult fare with lower rates for children, families, etc. So it and it, it does, I know Duane has double checked that, and that's a pretty accurate figure for what the actual net revenue is per passenger for the full run out to the mill and back. So again, the estimated revenue is probably fairly, uh, fairly conservative. I was estimating about a 60% occupancy, 180 seats are available with five passenger cars. And I'm thinking if there is fairly good promotion, there's no reason why fewer runs with more people, obviously just the economics of that makes sense to try and, and fill the trains more fully. Fundraising donation sponsorships would be up in that case. And again, analogous to what, what I was showing at McLean Mill, uh, no, no paid summer staff in the case of the minimal operations, just volunteers at the train station. Whereas with the other option, it would be possible to apply for employment grants to get people to, to help out as interpreters and or assistants uh, with with ticketing and so forth. So much higher revenues with that one overall, as you can see, but also fairly much higher costs. Now, going down to the, the expenses, the estimated expenses thing, in both cases, it's important to have a manager um, to, to sort of keep an eye on what's going on, to do the regulatory material, just to keep the paperwork in order in that. It's more involved than I had understood it was, I, as I've learned over the last little while. It's also pretty important to have a, a consistent railway mechanic, somebody who is certified, who is recognized by Technical Safety BC as knowing what they're doing and having the base down at the roundhouse and basically managing the equipment there, keeping an eye on things all the time. You can see that the amounts for the manager don't go up proportionately uh, with the fuller operation, but the railway mechanic piece I think is really essential if there's more, more longer runs and more machinery being used. So that, that's the principal difference in terms of staffing there. The track bridge right-of-way maintenance, this is the one that I found fairly shocking just cost-wise. In 2017, when the 400 ties were done by a contractor, it was $45,000. To put things on sort of a 25-year cycle means replacing 800 to 1,000 ties a year. So working backwards from that, if the, if the partial operation is focused just on the area kind of from Argyle Street over to the Kitsuxis Bridge, it's possible to obviously focus that, keep that cost down significantly on the short term anyway, um, depending on what's planned longer term. I think 125,000 is, is a fairly realistic figure. There's a lot of stuff that needs doing right now. There's potentially some work on some of the trestles, 
Uh, there's a lot of work on vegetation, some on ballast, uh, as well as just the regular tie replacement and that. So there are a fair number of things that need doing. The, uh, just dropping down, the next significant difference is locomotive repair and maintenance. So that's parts, uh, contracted work and so forth over and above having a, a rail mechanic uh, in the roundhouse. Fairly minimal if we're just operating the small number 11 locomotive. Basically the cost on the other side is the cost to re replace the wheel set and do some cosmetics on the 8427 to make it suitable to become the primary mover for, for that. Um, likewise, you, you'll notice that there's janitorial services for the station and the Hilton. The Hilton is the trailer that's used as sort of an office and base adjacent to the roundhouse. Uh, not a big difference in most of the rest of it. The fuel cost is significantly different. The number 11 doesn't burn a lot of diesel. Um, if we're not using the Baldwin steam locomotive in this first year in 2019, um, obviously no cost for that. Uh, the rest of it, again, thinking that probably the liability insurance that has been carried by the City of Port Alberni previously would be a little bit higher if it was the full run out to the mill. I don't have a basis for that. That's just intuited from how insurance tends to work. The um, I don't know, the rest of it's all fairly self-explanatory, yeah. I think. Okay. Um, I'll, I'll just throw it open to questions. Sure. Yes. Thank you very much. Um, Councillor, are there questions at this point? Councillor Corbiel. Jamie, just on the, the maintenance, um, when it comes to the bridge, is that, uh, are you looking at doing something fairly substantial or is it just basically keeping the replacing ties? There will be some more substantial work. It sounds, and again, this is from what I got from Southern Rail, it sounds like some of that can be deferred for a year or two, but it would be really important to have a bit of a, a reserve in place to do that. Um, the, the original um, 2016 uh, plan for bridge maintenance and things had some very large capital expenditures half million dollar ones in a couple of years. Um, whether that is, I, I'm hearing different opinions on just mm -hmm. exactly how much is done. So that's a relatively conservative number, but to the high end of conservative, I guess. Uh, I think there would be more required in two or three years, maybe five years, depending on, on just how surveys go and things. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? Councilor Washington. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, your insurance, uh, you said both in both cases it was previously paid by the city. Yeah. Um, would that cost be less if the city, like if the city did the same policy but with all the other stuff the city has, would that cost of insurance be less? I'm looking for help. I, I don't see um, our director of finance in the room, so I, I don't have the answer to that. I'm sorry. Or do I? <laughs> Councillor Haggard. Uh, thank you. Um, your fundraising and donations and sponsorships is fairly low, and I know everyone's busy, but the trains are probably something that's very near and dear to the people's hearts in this community. So maybe if you did a bit more fundraising and got yourself out to the community more, I think you'd be very surprised at the support that you would get. And one idea I had was when the multiplex was uh, nearing finished and they were running out of funds, so they sold a brick and you could get your name on it, maybe sell a tie or, or yeah. there's lots of different things that you could do that maybe would not take as much time, but I think you'd get a lot of community support if agree. you did fundraising. Yeah. The other the other thing that I probably should have mentioned is that with both of these the the minimal option is sort of to keep things ticking over and keep the APR alive with the idea that it would again regenerate and build. Um, you know, the elephant in the room is the number seven Baldwin steam locomotive, which is down for boiler repairs right now. And um, that would be the sort of thing that fundraising could be leveraged on really, really well. 
Um, you know, people do love steam. There's no question about that. It's very evocative. So no, I, I agree with you. And again, very conservative with this. And I also just tried to do what would be covered for 2019. I think if we started looking at fundraising into 2020, get the Baldwin back on the track in 2020, you know, there, there are, there's definitely places we could leverage more that way. I agree entirely. I have some questions around the numbers. Um, for the bigger option here, we've got 45 runs, um, 110 passengers, $123,000 of revenue. Um, when I look down at the trial balance and the um, budget, which are the um, finances, which I know are not your responsibility, um, for 2018, the revenue sales admissions, I would imagine, is what the um, train admissions were, were only 87,000. And it was mentioned that we did 55 runs. Mm -hmm. So if we did 55 runs and only brought in 87,000, I'm, and I think, I can't remember if some of those were the steam train or not last year, few very were, few, if, if at week, all. Yeah. For a week. Um, you know, then I, I'm, I'm feeling uncomfortable using, you know, running 10 less runs and making $30,000 more, yeah. um, or, you know, expecting to. So what is that based on? That's based on the low occupancy. Um, consistently this past year, the, the occupancy was at about a 40% level. And I think that that is just too low. In some cases, probably, and I, I know later in the season, some of the runs were canceled because there just weren't enough people. Was it the Monday ones, Dwayne, that were canceled eventually? Um, so, so there was an attempt to do more runs, thinking that would bring in more revenue. Um, but every run is a fixed cost, basically, mm -hmm. in terms of fuel costs, in terms of, um, of the survey of the tracks mm -hmm. prior to, to that for, for yeah. safety, you know, et cetera, et cetera. So if you've got lower ridership, what one of the things, and, and this is part of the time crunch right now, in fairness, I'll put in my pitch for that right now, too. Yeah. <laughs> uh, is that we do need to promote more heavily and it needs to be totally predictable so when somebody shows up here on their way to Tofino yep. or on their way to Banfield or whatever it is they know that the train will be running that they can have a run out to the mill or on the waterfront whatever is happening but making it really predictable mm -hmm. and and getting the word out there a, a bit more effectively perhaps yeah. I think that that's really a key part of the, the puzzle um, and there, there did used to be a fairly substantial budget back in the old days when, when McLean Mill was, was uh, more involved with the city directly. Um, there was a fairly substantial um, advertising budget and it was pretty much blanketing. It was more print media than obviously than interweb stuff, but it, it did have some impact. Okay. Yeah, I think my, my concern is um, if people had 55 chances to run or ch 55 chances to ride the train last year and we only generated $87,000 of revenue, I, I think, um, you know, estimating, I, I can understand why, but estimating that we're going to um, make $30,000 more when people have 10 fewer chances mm -hmm. to ride, I just don't see that our revenue is going to be that high. Um, so I'm, I'm concerned about that. And I am very conscious of the time because we actually only have 25 minutes left for this meeting. Then we have a budget meeting, but I am going to just. <laughs> oh, sorry, Ken, if you don't mind just coming up quickly. Ken Rutherford, Frank Street in Port Alberni. And I did manage the mill for one summer out there when Neil was sick. In Jamie's proposal, um, on the more extreme side, if you want to call it that, the moderate side, he's proposing the, the mill to be running. So that will draw your people that will give you that revenue. If you just look at the train by itself going out there sure. with nothing on the site, there were tourists this year that came very discouraged. They paid that much money and got to see nothing at the site. So if you've got activities on the site with interpreters, uh, you're going to get the revenue. Okay, thank okay. you. Okay, and so council, we are running um, short on time, but um, Dr. Morton, if you would mind giving us a really brief overview of the capital, um, because I think that's an sure. important piece of this. And I'm just going to build on something that Ken just said too. 
Uh, part of my projection was based on what used to be generated prior to um, 2015, 2016. Uh, the, the revenues for the train were as high as 179000 on some years. So I, I do believe the number is fairly conservative. Was still. that more steam train or was it? It was more steam okay. train, uh, which definitely is a factor. Sure, yeah. Thank you. All right, so capital. And just uh, I'll, I'll give you the disclaimer, first of all, um, is that the last page is a 000 capital budget because I thought with the APR piece, I started looking at putting the cost of doing the um, 8427 uh, Alco locomotive as a capital project, but it really is just operational. You know, replacement of wheels and things is part of the ongoing operation of the, the um, object. So I just left that out altogether. So there is no APR capital budget. Um, included there. I, I thought it all just fit more, and, and that could be debated back and forth and up and down and sideways, just, just the way I came down when I was playing with it. So with this one, there are a couple of givens. So the primary given, the elephant in the room again, is the environmental testing and remediation, and uh, thanks to the CAO, I found out that that 200000 was designated from 2018, so not in fact a 2019 budget and the $63,000 allocation have been put in place to see through the rest of that in 2019. The Historic Structure Conservation Project, that's the one that uh, Director Thorpe has applied for, looking at cost sharing with Parks Canada mm -hmm. to build on what we did with the assessment last year. So that would be 60,000 from the City of Port Alberni, 60,000 from Parks Canada, to ensure the preservation of three or four of the buildings out there right now. The, uh, the other capital funding, that is, is uh, more broadly spread. So some of that would be for the contemporary assets, some of that would be for the signage and interpretation uh, project that's down below. So if you go down to the estimated expenses, please, Davina. So that breaks down. The, the historic structures, a lot of them require ongoing maintenance. It hasn't always been done fully. Uh, in, in some cases, it's structural stuff, foundation stuff. In some cases, roofs um, that need work. In, this doesn't necessarily involve something as major as one of the cost-sharing projects with Park Scandal, <coughs> but something that needs to be done regardless. Likewise, there will be capital projects required in the contemporary use zone just to ensure that, again, things are in place for the events, that everything is safe, that everything is copacetic for those. So, and then, as you can see, just a $10,000 allocation for interpretive signage and publications. Some of that material is already in place in draft form. Uh, it would need to be pulled together and then actually printed up, installed, um, and or put on, on some sort of electronic media that could be picked up by smartphones or devices at the site for a passive interpretation. Okay. Okay, council, questions on capital? I think the capital is more straightforward. Okay. It's pretty straightforward. Thank you very much. Um, and I just want to really um, thank you for putting this together because although these numbers are shocking, um, because they are high, <laughs> um, they, I, I think that this is the best um, realistic projection of what this will actually cost that we have been given. Um, not, you know, just um, this year, but I mean, over time, I think this is a really, um, I think you've taken the time to really put together a budget that is realistic for operating this. And I know, um, you know, I've had conversations with, um, with people in the community where we've said, we just want to know what it does cost mm -hmm. um, because we don't want to run a, you know, an operation and not run it well and always be underfunding it so that the organizations are always struggling. We need to have the information in front of us so that we can make the decision. And um, so I really thank you for putting this together in, in a thoughtful way. I'm gratified to hear you say that, Madam <laughs> Mayor, because it's, it's important that it not suffer the death of a thousand yeah. cuts. Yeah. And, um, you know, it, it, it really is a remarkable resource, both mm -hmm. the railway being done all by volunteers to this point, as well as the historic site. 
and uh, they, they are special. It mm -hmm. is special for the community, and so I'm, I'm happy to hear that you're looking at it in a thoughtful way. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, so, Council, we do have the financials, and I'm not going to ask for them to be reviewed because we do have them in our package. Are there any specific questions on the financials? Councilor Corbiel? I don't, uh, I don't know who could answer the questions. If uh, on line uh, 1852, where it talks about leasehold improvements of $140, Forty-five thousand dollars. Does is there someone who would know the the answer to what that actually was? Here's the map. The um, that's the uh, trial balance, and that it's a little different than the income expense statement. But uh, the accountant has uh, treated this in a in a special way. So what happens is, is that some of the capital in improvements that we have done over the time have been capitalized and are subject to um, depreciation. And it was set up as a leasehold improvement. So some of that work is defined that way. Okay. And uh, another question, this is line uh, 5410, which is wages and salaries. And I'm just mm -hmm. interested in what what's included in this number. It's 253 thousand three hundred and twenty two dollars right okay so we had an executive director who was uh, I think the salary was in the 65 range and uh, we had uh, a manager assistant or pardon me a part-time manager and a, and a salesperson uh, event coordinator um, we have uh, some costs to do with the railway the salaries and wages of the railway and we had a bunch of summer students uh, eight um, although their costs were recovered, as well as we had some students from the uh, New Challenge Economic Development uh, Program um, that were also on site that were part of our wages of which we are recovering as well. So there was a combination of a number of those things. We had a, a little bit of uh, work done by uh, one of our, uh, a person who uh, we paid on an hourly basis to do some maintenance work, um, and things like that. So. And I assume you, the summer students, you, you had a grant for them? Correct. Okay. Uh, it was about 25000 for the summer students and about, I think it's about 12000 for the NEDP. Okay. Thank you very much. Any other questions on the financials? Okay. Thank you very much. Um, Council, before we move on to making decisions, we do have correspondence. Um, we have a... An email dated January 28, 2019, suggesting a temporary stop to operations at McLean Mill be, effect be effected immediately pending a review of operations and consideration of potential health impacts. And then from Susan Roth, we have an email dated January 28, suggesting that McLean Mill historic site close from the public until further studies um, indicate that the water and soil levels no longer contain contaminants. Would somebody like to move receipt of those? Is there a seconder? No second. Thank you. All in favor? <laughs> Carried. Um, okay, and council, um, so given that these are um, very difficult decisions to make, um, if nobody has a problem with it, I think I'm going to make motions. Um, normally I would let council make them, but I'm going to just take the lead on this. Um, I have a few motions that I'd like to make. The first one is, um, I think, straightforward, um, that we officially separate um, the budgets and operation, or the budgets and um, essentially the operation of the railway and the McLean Mill site. Is second, are there any questions or comments on that? Okay, all in favor. Was that opposed or was that a late no, vote? No, that's Thank you. Um, the, <laughs> the second motion I'm going to make, um, I'll, and then I'll speak to it, is that we, council does not operate the train in 2019. Is there a seconder? And then I'll explain more. Okay, so um, as I said earlier, I really appreciate getting a budget um, that I think this is actually a very 
realistic um, breakdown of what the costs to run the train and run it effectively are. Um, I was really struck personally by um, basically what I would calculate as the subsidy per run. Um, if we look at the two options, the first one being um, for the minimal option, $127,000 for 60 short runs. If we take that per, ru or per run, it breaks down to about $2,100, the city subsidizing every time the train runs. Um, the second one at 45 runs, $192,000, it breaks down to about $4,300, the city subsidizing every time the train runs. Um, I do not want to be a community that um, loses the train. Um, I would like us to get to a point where we can run the train again. But I think with the current budget, um, and I, again, I think this is very realistic, I think we need to start talking about another way to do this. And I don't think that um, we're going to get there if we just keep running it as we are right now. So my motion is to basically pause on the train in 2019 um, and try to work forward to figure out a different way. Um, after our Committee of the Whole, I actually had a few submissions of information, uh, or not information, but um, people come up to me in the public and um, send me emails, and people have a lot of good ideas. Um, and I think that what that shows is people really love the train and, train and value it in our community. Um, I've heard ideas to um, potentially lease a train, um, and then we have a very fixed cost per run. I've had uh, heard ideas for sponsorships and things like that. And while I think a lot of it has been tried, um, because we've been doing this for a while and people have, um, you know, put a lot of time and effort into making sure that um, we run it as financially eff effectively or efficient as possible. Um, I think there are other options that we can be talking about. So I think we need to give ourselves the time to have those conversations. Um, we have conversations, in my opinion, that we need to have with um, the owner of the tracks or a portion of the tracks, at least, about maintenance. And I don't think that we can do that and continue to run the train at the same time. So I will open that up to conversation. Councillor Washington. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Would this also include the Santa runs that the IHS does? I would suggest that to start, our, motion, our direction be that we don't run trains in 2019. If toward the end of the year we're able to get to a point where we can figure out a way to do that, um, then let's run Santa trains. Um, but I think we need to figure out a way. Um, we need to... We need to work on the budget. We need to um, figure out a way that does not have this kind of subsidy from the city. So I would say at this point, it would be no Santa runs um, with the hope that we could end up somehow with Santa runs. Councillor Poon. I agree. It seems to me that we are putting too much money into this and... I think it's a very important asset that we have, but I think we should look towards um, running the steam train rather than uh, kind of a, a halfway there diesel. Yeah. Any other comments, Councillor Corbiel? So just to be clear, um, if uh, if all goes well with the uh, the steam locomotive it could be up and running in in 2020 if uh, if we can get uh, some financing in order yeah i think that um i mean anything could be we could run steam in 2020 we could run nothing in 2020 i think that um, the intent of my motion is that we need to find a better a more financially viable way to do this um and 2019 is kind of our opportunity to do that Councillor Haggard, did you have a question? Thank you, Madam Mayor. I just want to say that I have spent a lot of sleepless nights thinking about this. Do I make a decision with my heart? Because we all love the trains. There's nothing I love more than taking my grandkids on the Santa train or hearing the um, the whistle when I, you know, when I'm in town. We all love it. But when I look at the numbers, I have to think with my head, and that's the difficult situation that the council is in right now and the budget is just so tight but again I think you have a lot of opportunities to fundraise the community will support you and I'll be the first one there to support you and donate 
to any initiatives that you have, but I think it's something, and also what struck me and that I had no idea was that we're spending a lot of money on maintaining the tracks on something that we don't own, and I think that has to be rectified. So I think that this might be a good time just to regroup and revisit and just rethink about what we're doing and look at the numbers and come up with a better solution. So I don't think this is the end by no means. I think it could be a really good new beginning for us. Councillor Paulson. I just want to echo um, Councillor Washington's feelings about the special runs and I would hope that the group would come back to us with a plan for maintaining those special runs. and. I spent uh, a fair amount of my time with Parks and Recreation uh, doing ev events and planning. And I found that if you lost an event, quite often you would never get it back in the same form or with the same enthusiasm. So I'm concerned about that. And if we're going to go down this path, I would put it back into the hands of the people that um, put those events on and say, look, we can cover off the costs. We can do it safely. We can, we can run the train. We want this event, and we need this event. If we're going to, I mean, the decision we're making right now is to stop train traffic, but I need the, um, I, would, I would hope that um, they would come back and say, look, we can make this work. I'm, I'm concerned about that. Um, I really would like to see steam back on there. I mean, my house on 6th Avenue, and to hear that steam whistle is is spectacular and and just, I hear that, and um, most of my relatives are from Alberta, and they love it. They love that steam donkey show. They love the train, and um, and, and not to have it would be a, a shame. But um, I think this is time to stop and check ourselves and um, make sure that we do it right, come back at it, and um, and go at it full bore. And, and marketing, Jamie, I think is, is a huge part of this. And we've never ever, I don't think we've ever gotten to the level that we really wanted to or we envisioned on the marketing side. And like I say, the, the people that I entertain are my relatives from Alberta. They love that place. You should hear them talk about it. You know, we get blasé with what we have. Um, those are the people that we need to go after. And uh, there's more people um, vacationing at home in their home countries. So get after them and... Um, get them to Port Alberni. It's a tough decision. This is not where I envisioned we would be, but um, maybe we take a hiatus and uh, come back and go at her. Better. Mm -hmm. Are there any further questions or comments from council? Okay, on the motion, all in favor? Opposed? Carried. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Um, and the third motion that um, I want to make is um, just for a bit more information back, um, a report back for the operations of McLean Mill um, from the CAO. Um, and if I can get a seconder on that. Um, I'll, perfect, thank you. Um, and I think we've got a great, um, we've got some information in front of us. The budget um, is very thorough. So this gives us a, a great starting point um, of options of kind of where we want to go. Um, I know that council, different councillors have had questions about, and McLean Mill Society has um, made some recommendations as well about um, running um, the society in a different way and if it should be opened up to a more general membership. Um, so I think if we could have a report back with more options um, and recommendations from staff on where we should go with the operations piece. Councillor, are there any specifics that anyone else would like to ask for as a part of that? Yeah, this is, it's a report back. <laughs> report back specifically on governance options or just not sure exactly what your motion is? Um, well, I think on government or govern governance options, um, but just specifically for the site. And, oh, sorry, Councillor Haggard, and then I'll let Sheena come up and speak. Okay, Sheena first. We have some serious time constraints with events where people are waiting to find out and 
so that a report needs to happen fairly quickly. There's a lot of people waiting to move ahead. I would agree with you completely that um, a report needs to happen quickly. I also think that we need to make sure um, when we're spending, um, you know, over a hundred thousand dollars that we are making the right decisions and that we have all of the information that we need. Um, and one thing that um, I would say very confidently is that um, the events that we've committed to for this year, um, council fully expects to carry out with the exception of the train piece possibly. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So that's a problem for some of the events, mm -hmm. but that'll have to be wrecked. Like sure. f dealt with and I and I and I agree that it needs to be thought out thoroughly so that it's a good model going forward it's just that we have so many people just phoning us every day kind of asking like are we what's happening so For if sure. we can just that's all. definitely <laughs> I'm sure it will be very quick uh, Councillor Haggard I think we need to work on the governance model but I also think we need to work on the operations piece, who does what, who's responsible for what, and that's been a really gray area that has not been clear uh, with the model that we have now. I think the McLean Mill Society is a good starting point. It's been a good model. They've made great strides within the last two years, and I congratulate for how much they've come moved forward, but I think there needs to be more clarification in that model, the operations piece as well as the governance. Does that make sense? Yeah, and I would add to that that I think um, one possible change we've talked about here is McLean Mill Society not being responsible for the infrastructure part, piece of it. So um, we don't really have enough information right now to talk about our, are we contracting McLean Mill Society to run operations of the mill, to run events, or to run a lot more. Um, and I think we need context on that before we make a decision on it. Are there any other comments or questions from Council? Councillor Corbiel. Uh, more of a, a comment. When things go south, the city ends up wearing it anyway. So I think, uh, I believe the society once before mentioned uh, the budget could be done through the city. And um, when, when things like the, the dam screws up, it's the city that ends up wearing it. So I think that, uh, you know, we have to take a more proactive role in in that uh, facility mm -hmm. yep i'd agree with you completely councillor poon any comments okay councillor paulson I think your cao, has CAO? <laughs> <laughs> councillor washington okay, councillor haggard okay so on the motion all in favor opposed carried okay so with that, uh, we are perfect timing for our next meeting. If anybody would like to stay for a budget meeting, um, is, could we get a motion to adjourn? Second. All in favor? Carried. <laughs>